Hello YouTube, Fuzzfinger here with more Final Fantasy IV and today we've got the great news of telling the King here in the Dwarven Castle that we didn't recover the Seven Crystals but we'll see what we can do next in order to actually try and defeat Golbez. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, please don't forget if you do and you want to support me then hit that like button and be subscribed to my YouTube gaming channel. Let's get on with today's episode. To begin with, we're going to head into the castle itself. That's pretty obvious, I would hope. And then we're just going to start heading north. I'm really enjoying Final Fantasy IV, actually. This was really always only going to be a side project, but I found myself playing it a lot. So we're well on our way to getting through this game now. And once we reach the king here, we're going to kick off the next cutscene. We tell him the bad news. We fell for the whole trapdoor ironic trick that shouldn't really be fooling anyone. So Luca or Lusa, whoever this is, is the king's daughter. So with the sealed necklace, we can actually make our way, so with the necklace we can make our way into the sealed cave since it's actually the key. The first thing we need to do is actually see if we can get to the sealed cave. A little bit of a spoiler for you, at the moment we can't. So we know it's located somewhere in the southwest area. If we head over to the airship here and bring up the map. Uh, we can see that we're not going to really be able to access the southwest area of this region because of the lava which the airship can't go across. So what we're going to do about this? Well we need to sort out the airship so that it can actually travel across the lava. Which means we need to head back now to find somebody who can fix the airship. In order to find such a person that could help us repair the airship we're going to head back into the castle and we're going to head the following way. Once we're in the main section here, we're going to head over to the left hand side. You could also get there from the right, it doesn't really matter, but I'll go this way. We see the inn ahead of us and we're going to head over and down into the next area. Whether you come from the left or the right, you want to be in this uh, area here. This is the place where you could summon the Fat Chocobo, if you remember. And there's a hidden door. It's not really hidden, but the area's not on the map, so you can miss it. Just here in between these candles, you want to head through this area, and this is the castle infirmary. And look who it is, lying down, no other than Sid himself. The one who we thought was dead, blew himself up, but he's actually alive, kicking and talking.
so it's nice to see Sid back up and working again, doing what Sid loves best, which is airships, fixing airships, building airships. And this is the way of fixing things that I like, just smashing everything with a hammer. Usually seems to the trick when I need to fix something. Hey, that looks broken. Let's just get the mallet on it. Oh, bless, he's had to go back to bed now. Okay, so the augments you get from Sid now depend on what augments you've given him previously. So if you've given him, uh, you'll, you'll always get analysed, which is what we get. Uh, but if you give him uh, two augments, then you get adrenaline. So, And I think you get upgrade if you give him one. But if you've been following my walkthrough, you'll just get analysed, which is what we wanted. This is what you need, really, for the first playthrough, so that we don't uh, mess up the other augments. But once we finish that cutscene with Sid, we can basically head out of the castle now completely and save up. We're done in the castle for the time being. So we'll head on outside here. And now, if we go into our airship, which has been upgraded, we can fly over the lava, whoop de doo da Which means we can fully explore the underground region of Final Fantasy IV now, finally. So, one thing you're going to want to probably do to begin with here, is just map out the entire underground area so that we can see everything. I've got all the map explored now. And with that done, we're going to head down to the southern area of it. And there should be a small town which we're looking for around here. And we're going to land nearby. And we're going to head on inside. This is the town of Tomra. So it's a new area that we haven't yet explored. Which means that we're going to start by looting all of the treasures that are littered around the place. If we head over to the west side here on the left of the item shop. Then somewhere around here there should be our first item. There we go. It's a bomb core, so make sure we grab that. And then here to bring up the map again. Uh, we're going to head up to the building up here that isn't kind of... It's more of like a house than anything else, isn't it? So we're going to actually just go inside this building where there's a bunch of chests that we can nab. We'll open these first. Come on, final one. 2,000 gil. And then there's a pot we can loot as well. For an Antarctic wind. Oh, actually, hang on. There's one more thing we can do in here, and that's the boxes. Next up, we're going to head down to the bottom of the town. So that we can access the inn. And somewhere around here, one of these dressers should have an item. There we go, a Gaia drum. I'm not actually sure what that is, a Gaia drum. But anyway, we'll pick it up. And that's the only item we can collect from here. But there's one more item we can collect, which is at the top of the town in the corner. That's a phoenix down. 
Right then, so we haven't sold our equipment in a while or looked at upgrading it, so we're going to start by heading into the weapon shop here. Uh, in terms of stuff to sell, well, pretty much sell anything that you're not using, to tell you the truth. You might want to keep more of your rare equipment. So anything such as flame swords, ice brands, wind spears, blood swords, uh, or your claws. Obviously we won't be needing those anymore. Uh, sleep blades, um, or your rods, your flame ice and thunder rods in particular, your kunai, uh, great bow. Although I don't sell the arrows, uh, since they don't sell for too much and can be used. Uh, headbands, flame shield, mithril shield, knight's armor, mithril gloves, flame, mail, just sell the lot. Okay, so I've got a nice amount of gear now, 325,000, which isn't too shabby, is it? Okay, so in terms of upgrades that we can actually purchase, uh, we can go for an Asura for Edge. He already has one, but he can actually use another, so we'll go ahead and buy that. And the Chain Whip is a good upgrade for Rydia, so we'll go ahead and purchase that one. We can even go ahead and sell the old weapons once we've unequipped those as well. Uh, if you have the silencing arrows, then you don't need to buy them. I don't know if we have, actually. I'm going to just check that. It's possible that we do. But I'm just going to go through the equipment here. Uh, we'll go for the chain whip. Yeah, we've already got the silencing arrows, so I should be using those, really. We'll throw those on. And then if we head down to edge... We can equip him with the second Ashura and just sell his uh, kunai weapon. Uh, right, let's have a look at the other characters as well. The Ogre Killer is a great weapon for Kane, although it's not cheap. So it's up to you if you think it's worth the money or not, or worth the gill. Maybe go and buy the armour before looking at the Ogre Killer, but I'm just going to go ahead since I believe I should have enough money to do it and get that equipped and I'm going to sell the other bits that I didn't sell just. Okay so we can head to the armour shop now and you can either go through the main exit or you can cheat and just go across the black space here. Uh, not that it leads to anything exciting. Right so in terms of armour, as you can see armour isn't cheap but I do recommend going for the uh, diamond armlet and um, you'll be giving that to Edge because it does actually boost his uh, magic defense quite a bit and at the moment that's pretty much what he needs. Uh, I do recommend as well upgrading both Cecil and Kane with a full set of diamond armor and then you can also sell Cecil and Kane's old armor but keep the power armlets since they can be useful uh, those armlets. Nice to see our party once again equipped to the optimal setting here. So we can actually leave the town of Tamra now. We are sorted, nicely equipped up, and with our items looted. So next up, we're going to head back to the airship here and go up to the corner of the map. This is where we need to fly over the lava. There's just no other way to get there otherwise. And somewhere in this corner section is a cave. There it is go ahead and land in front of it. We have to land on the grass still unfortunately. Okay, I understand it's not been the longest episode but I am going to finish off here because we do have this new dungeon to explore so it'd be good to get that done in a separate episode. So thanks for joining me today folks, I hope you've enjoyed this more, more of a story driven isn't it? More of a story driven episode but at least we've got the airship up and running to full capacity and we've upgraded our characters equipment. So let me know in the comment section what you thought and if you're playing along uh, how you're finding the game as well. And don't forget to hit that like button and come back soon for more Final Fantasy IV. Until then folks, take care. See you all. Bye for now.